Good Thursday morning, and it's Thursday morning, so it must be time for a science update. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bass Last. You can find Nature Bass Last at GuyMcPherson.com. This science update comes to you on December 2nd, 2021, with a few papers. One from The Hill, November 26th, 2021. The paper is called Climate Tipping Points. The Arctic is a bellwether for irreversible change. It certainly is. What happens in the Arctic affects the entire planet. And when the Arctic ice is gone, the resulting loss of albedo or reflectance, the almost certain increase in atmospheric methane pouring out of the Arctic, and a few other factors indicate that climate change will become vastly irreversible. If you can even categorize irreversible, which is binary, as vastly. Anyway, it's really bad news. In any event, I include links to all of these papers at GuyMcPherson.com, so upon seeing this video, you might check the date, December 2nd, 2021, go to GuyMcPherson.com and read the papers yourself. Okay, here we are. From the Hill, Climate Tipping Points, the Arctic is a bear bellwether for irreversible change. A paragraph into the paper, it points out that the Arctic is iconic for maintaining year-round ice and snow. Yes, it is. But in the last decade, it has begun to transition to wetlands and open ocean. This is very bad news. Emblematic of this change, in July 2020, the last intact ice shelf in the Canadian Arctic fell into the sea. Since first analyzed in 1902, the Milne Ice Sheet already lost 43% of its previous mass. Canada's Ellesmere Island ice caps were also lost in the summer of 2020. So bad things are happening at the northern end of the planet. The term tipping point is often applied to a moment of critical change in human history. In ecology, and I'm surprised this gets mentioned in any corporate article, in ecology, tipping points describe small changes that over time force an irreversible change. And that's exactly what's happening in the Arctic right now. Yearly lows of sea ice and a startling increase in permanent thaw in a warming climate signal that the tipping point has already been crossed. We have already lost the frozen Arctic. Right there in a corporate media outlet, we have already lost the frozen Arctic. Yes, we have. At this critical moment of loss, we must use the Arctic tipping point as a hard lesson as ecosystems worldwide approach tipping points the hardest of lessons, which indicates that we are about to lose habitat for humans on this most beautiful and amazing of planets. The paper goes on. In 2019, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, reported that just 1% of the Arctic Ocean ice older than four years old remained. Less than 1% of the old ice. What we're left with now is fragile, thin ice. A warming atmosphere and sea prevent ice growth, leading to an ice-free Arctic Ocean. In the summer of 2020, Arctic wildfires expanded across the tundra, driving permafrost thaw and triggering meltwater infiltration. In the permafrost, water from small thaw areas expanded laterally, warming the surrounding permafrost ice. Gradually, Disconnected thaw expands across a large area, abruptly, abruptly being a key word here, abruptly transforming frozen ecosystems to wetlands. So we have these frozen ecosystems that are being transformed into wetlands with non-frozen water. In pockets of permafrost and ice melt, vegetation grows at unprecedented rates. Once permafrost thaws, ongoing atmospheric warming makes a return to stable permafrost impossible. The language from this paper, a return to stable permafrost is impossible. That's an amazing admission. The rapidity of Arctic change, and I've pointed out repeatedly in this space that the rapidity of change is the critical factor, not whether we get to 2 degrees C above the 1750 baseline, which we've already passed, not that we get to 3 or 4 or 5, but the rapidity of change, which dictates how few organisms can keep up with that rate of change. So from the paper again at the Hill, the rapidity of Arctic change has surprised researchers and the public alike. 
Well, not everybody. I'm not even remote. In fact, I'm surprised that it has taken this long to have an ice-free Arctic. A little bit more on that point later. Our fragile Arctic ice must be the first and last system to cross a permanent tipping point. Well, it's a little too late for that. We've already crossed many so-called tipping points. And proclaiming that the loss of Arctic ice is going to be the last one is ignorant at best. There is very little time to alter the trajectory of Earth's ecosystems. And again, I really appreciate the focus on ecosystems and the rapidity of change in this article in the, in the Hill. There is very little time to alter the trajectory of Earth's e ecosystems halting climate-driven collapse. To protect the Earth's incredible diversity and stability, we must acknowledge that climate change is, an, is already permanently changing the planet, and we have very little time to change course. That's absolutely right. Climate change is already permanently changing the planet. Permanently, as in past tense, as in already happened. We have very little time to change course. This, this paper at the Hill was written by Kimberly Miner, a Climate Change Institute research assistant professor at the University of Maine. She works at the Arctic Methane Project looking at the impacts of climate change in the Arctic, and you would think she would know better than to write some of this very hopeful sounding stuff. That said, I understand that hope is all the rage these days. Another paper from CNN, November 25th, 2021, titled The Arctic Ocean Began Warming Decades Earlier Than Previously Thought, New Research Shows. Yes, that's exactly right. The Arctic Ocean has been warming since the outset of the 20th century, decades earlier than instrument observations would suggest, according to new research. The study, published Wednesday, the previous Wednesday from November 25th, in the journal Science Advances, found that the expansion of warm Atlantic Ocean water flowing into the Arctic, a phenomenon known as Atlantification, has caused Arctic water temperature in the region studied to increase by around 2 degrees C since 1900. And that's no surprise. Remember, Professor Andrew Glickson at Australian Northern University indicated in his latest book, The Event Horizon, that Earth is more than 2 degrees C warmer than the 1750 baseline, so it's no particular surprise that the Arctic Ocean is also more than 2 degrees C above the 1750 baseline. The paper continues with a quote from Francesco Muschiatello. I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. He's the co-author and an assistant professor at Cambridge, co-author of the paper in Science Advances. And he said it's not clear how much of a role, if any, human-caused climate change played in the early Arctic warming. Really? And more research is needed, of course. More research is always the demand for professors. And here's a quote from Francesco. We're all... We're talking about the early 1900s, and by then we've already been supercharging the atmosphere with carbon dioxide. It's possible that the Arctic Ocean is more sensitive to greenhouse gases than previously thought. Yes, so this is another admission in an ongoing trend over the course of the last several years that things are happening and are capable of happening much faster than we imagined. Finally, to wrap up this paper, Muschiatello again mispronounced, I'm sure, said the Arctic Ocean may experience further warming due to Atlantification. I can't imagine any way around that, by the way. And he says in a quote, when I talk to my students, I always try to make them aware that the Arctic is warming very, very quickly and much faster than any other area on the planet. It's very unsettling and very troubling, especially because we still don't have a full understanding of feedbacks at play. And my fear is that by the time we do crack the problem, it's going to be too late. Guess what, Francesco? It's already too late. We've triggered many self-reinforcing feedback loops, all of which are irreversible. More on that in a second. From the paper in Science Advances, November 24th, 2021, titled Rapid Atlantification Along the Fram Strait at the Beginning of the 20th Century, written by Tommaso Tessi and 13 other scholars, the abstract begins with this line, the recent expansion of Atlantic waters into the Arctic Ocean represents 
undisputable evidence of the rapid changes occurring in the region. That's right. Rapid changes are undisputably occurring in the Arctic. We reconstruct the history of Atlantification along the Eastern Fram Strait during the last 800 years using precisely dated paleo-oceanographic record records based on organic biomarkers and benthic for a mineral feral data. I can't even pronounce the scientific words. Our research showed rapid changes in water mass properties that commenced in the early 20th century, several decades before the documented Ad Atlantification by instrumental records. So they go back further in time, rely on new techniques, and discover that the Atlantification began earlier than previously reported. Surprisingly, depressingly, sadly, this paper includes no mention of the paper by Maslowski and colleagues, The Future of Arctic Sea Ice, in the 2012 issue of Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences, among the most reputable journals in the history of the planet, and yet no mention in this paper in Science Advances. Also no mention, of course, of the 65 self-reinforcing feedback loops already triggered based on my peer-reviewed based on peer-reviewed papers that I cite in my climate change summary, which was updated, last updated more than five years ago. Even the IPCC acknowledged that, that climate change is abrupt and irreversible with two separate reports published in 2019, as I've pointed out previously in this space. Irreversibility was acknowledged by the IPCC special report on the ocean and cryosphere and a changing planet. Abrupt climate change was acknowledged also in 2019 in the IPCC Special Report on Climate Change, Desertification, Land Degradation, Sustainable Land Management, Forest Security, and Greenhouse Gas Fluxes in Terrestrial Ecosystems. Yes, that's quite a title. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, we'll try to put together another one of these science updates in about a week.